le basse le le prende le le basure candi a te le le bandole le le basule le bracaia the bible says is not my word like as fire is not like my word like as fire saith the lord like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces is not my word is not my answer to you it's not the promise I made you. It's not the purpose I gave you. Is it not like fire, saith the Lord? Is it, is it not like the hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? Do you know a, the rock is a stronghold? It's a fortress. Those cute affirmations that y'all be saying, that don't break strongholds. Those cute quotes you post, those don't break strongholds. He said, it's not my word like fire, saith the Lord. Like a hammer that breaks that, that strong road. We come and we pray all day. We pray, we, we join these fast. You, you DM me, you say, Tiffany, it's not working. What am I doing wrong? Baby, you take the hammer and you hit the rock and you hit the rock and you hit the rock. And you hit this rock, and you hit the 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 rock, and you hit this rock, and you hit the rock, and you hit the rock. And that thing breaks into pieces. He said, the promise I made you. I don't know what promise God made you. I don't know the answer he gave you. That's what word it means. It means the word of God, but it also means the answer. It means the promise. It means the purpose. He said, it's, he said it in a question to you because you forgot. He said, it's not my word like fire. It's not regular fire. It's supernatural fire. That fire is the wrath of God. It is the same fire in Zechariah 2.5 where he says that will be a I will surround you with my fire. He said, that same promise I gave you, is it not like fire? And is it not like a hammer that breaks the rock into pieces, breaks this stronghold, breaks this fortress between you and your blessing? How many of you know that there's a wall sometimes that stands between you and the blessing? Ephesians 2.14. He says, break down the middle wall of partition between us. Sometimes there's a middle wall of partition between you and the blessing. So we got to take this seriously, y'all. We are living in a day and age that if you don't know the word of God, if you don't have the sword of the spirit, that is the word of God, you are going to be in trouble. You cannot afford to not know the word of God. Affirmations are cute but they don't kill this demon that's been torturing your family for generations. Quotes are amazing, but they don't kill strongholds. It is only the word of God. So when you go into prayer, when I say take this word like medicine three times a day, I mean take the word of God, scripture, and you read it over your life over and over and over and over and over but Tiffany I don't see it coming to pass over and over and over Tiffany I don't see nothing moving over and over and over and over Tiffany I don't see it shaking over and over and over and over again his word doesn't lie he's not a liar we don't serve a lying God so when he says when you say this word is a if the word of God is a hammer the more you say it over and over and over again, you're going to see that thing break down into pieces. It, that, that rock has to obey you. I'm not coming to the rock in Tiffany's name. I'm coming to the rock in the name of Jesus. The winds and the waves obey him. You don't think the rock don't? The wind and the, the fish obey him. God told the ocean that you have a boundary, you can't go past that part. The ocean stops because it obeys God. You don't think the rock does? 
You don't think the rock of your health does. You don't think the rock of your finances does. You don't think the rock of your family does. You don't think the rock that's been in the way of your ministry does. You don't think this rock of fear bows to God. The witches and the warlocks are loud about their, about their religion. They're loud about serving their God. They're proud of it. And here you are always hiding. I can't, I don't want to offend. There is a reason you're still bound. And sometimes because we've been bound for so long, we think it's a part of, the part of our personality. We think it's just how things are. Baby, you're not supposed to be living like this. That's not God. That's not the will of God for your life. So declare today that everything changes. Everything changes. I was going to take a break this week, this month, because you know my birthday is the 4th of July. And I was like, what is the point of being born? What is the point of being born if I don't see people being grabbed out of the grips of hell's hand and I don't take the day I was born to pull you out of hell's hand? What is the point? So today, just for, we're going we, to, today, y'all in for a treat, but just for a second, Sometimes you're like, Tiffany, I don't have the words. You don't need the words. He said, when you are praying in the Holy Ghost, can I get a little bit more sound on my mic? said when you are praying in the Holy Ghost he's literally interceding through you straight to God you may have run out of all the words in the world but you begin to pray in the spirit he is interceding on your behalf with groanings that cannot be uttered you think that sometimes well I don't know how to speak in tongues groan he said in Jeremiah Joshua he said in Joshua, meditate on my word day and night. One of the definitions of the word meditation is to roar. Tiffany, I don't need this. I don't know how to speak in tongue. Roar. Something breaks in the realm of the spirit when you roar. Some things require a fight. I know y'all don't think we got to fight anymore. I get it. But something, you got to fight in the realm of the spirit. So just for a little bit, and I don't want y'all to play too, too loud because sometimes when you play, everybody gets dependent on the sound. And they don't give it all they got. So you can give me a little warfare, but a little low. And I want y'all, everybody, every man for themselves. You better pray like your papa. You better pray like your life depended on it. I need to hear some tongues from you. So everybody just stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up like your life depends on it. Stir it up like the thing you're believing God for, you're going to see it tomorrow. Stir it up like the only thing between you and the blessing is this prayer. Stir it up like the only thing between you and the breakthrough is this prayer. Stir it up. Stir it up. Your breakthrough depends on it. Your healing depends on it. The blessing depends on it. Fire fall! 
Your, your prayers right now is killing every enemy standing in your way. Your prayer right now is killing every enemy standing in the way. Lift up your voice. Open up your mouth and pray. I don't know about you, but I need a I need a breakthrough for the second half of the year. Nobody in here that should be tired yet. When you have a lifestyle of prayer, what we did was nothing. When your life depends on prayer, what we just did was nothing. 
When your family depends on prayer, what we just did was nothing. Erect an altar of prayer in your bloodline. I pray that the fire of God hit your altars of prayer. I pray that the spirit of prayer and supplication hit your lives like never before. I pray that you can't even sleep because you are in prayer. I pray that one, two hours is enough because God has had you so compelled in prayer that you got your rest in that. Oh, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you for the next six months. We praise your name for the last six months, God. We worship your name, God. Receive our sacrifice of prayer. Receive our sacrifice of praise. Father, you kept us. We are still alive. We are still alive. We are still alive. We are alive. We are alive. We are still here. We are still standing. Many people died. You said a thousand would fall at our side, 10,000 at our right hand, but death would not come nigh us. It's easy to forget what God did when you focused on the, the future, but when you remind yourself of the past, do y'all know what we just came? The world will shut down, and we are still here. You are marked by God. Father, we thank you. We plead the blood of Jesus over July. We plead the blood of Jesus over August. We plead the blood of Jesus over September. The blood of Jesus Christ over October. The blood of Jesus over November. The blood of Jesus over December. We thank you, God, that the blood rolls out in front of us like a red carpet. That every month we walk into, Father, we walk on the carpet of the blood. We thank you, God, that the blood of Jesus saturates our feet. That every country, every region, every city, every community we walk in, God, the enemy cannot track or trace us because we are picked up by the blood. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus over my mind, the blood of Jesus over my thoughts, the blood of Jesus over my cells, the blood of Jesus over my organs, the blood of Jesus over my voice, the blood of Jesus over my sight, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. You will not be weary in well-doing. You will not faint in this season. God promised it, it will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is our first day of our corporate three-day fast. And what I love about this specific fast is that this, we're getting ready to go into the next half of the year. But these specific three days are like intermission. It's when you go in a locker room and regroup, re-strategize, renew, reprioritize. It's when you stop being busy with all that, everything that doesn't matter. And you go back with your father and you say, I'm being attacked on all sides, I'm losing the game. And God says, let me lay out a map and let you know where they at. But you can only hear it when you're quiet. This is intermission. This is intermission. Don't miss what God is saying. Don't miss what God is showing you. Don't ignore it. Take everything seriously. Because we're not praying for victory, we're praying from a place of victory. I decree over your life that every prayer point you have been praying since we started these fasts last year, you will testify that God turned every prayer point into a testimony that God turned every prayer point into a testimony. Congratulations. Congratulations. You all can have a seat. 
I was asking God what he wanted me to share with you today. And he told me he wanted to, he wanted me to teach on something. I want everybody to turn to Judges chapter six. You know, a lot of the times we go to God and we're, we're praying and we're believing God for something and we hit so many, we just like, why am, I, why am I not getting answers? Why is nothing happening for me? And I know a lot of people don't believe in curses. People, a lot of people, a lot of Christians don't believe in generational curses. And that's fine. It's sad because if you don't believe in them, you don't have the power to stop it. But let's say you didn't believe in generational curses. I think we can all agree that there are consequences to curses. And those consequences look like your family members dying all of cancer. Your family members dying all of heart attacks. None of the men in your family make it to 30, 35 years old. The, the women in your family aren't married or have divorces or have mental illnesses. There's a series of poverty that just ravishes your bloodline. Doesn't matter how much money you're making, it never lasts. Those are generational curses or the consequences of those curses. And because we don't know how to stop these things, we pray and we pray and we pray and we get weary because that's the goal of the devil is to have you hit this brick and you can't figure out why you keep coming up against some type of wall without you understanding. That's why he said my people perish because they lack knowledge. The fact that you don't know how to fight is the reason you keep losing the battle. You don't take a knife to a gunfight. I said you don't take a knife to a gunfight. Unless y'all be taking knives at gunfights. But there is something that is required more, and I believe the answer is in Judges chapter 6. Somebody say, I'm more powerful than I think I am. Bible says, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven for seven years. Now, sometimes when we read the scripture, especially the Old Testament, we don't know how to apply it to our lives because everything just seems so many big words and things of that nature. And then there are a lot of Christians that don't believe that the Old Testament applies to us because of the new covenant. But how many of you know that there's a curse in the Old Testament of inflammation? Which means, and you can find that in the book of Deuteronomy, which means that if you disagree with me about curses being a thing, then inflammation should not be here anymore. With that being said, it would behoove you to get into the old covenant to see what some of these strategies were so that you knew how to destroy them um, in this day and age. When I, when I read this, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years, it's very easy for us to detach from this, from this, from this story because we are ones that don't think that we do evil in the sight of the Lord. The word Midian means strife. It means fight, discord, struggle. So what he said was the Lord delivered them into the hand of strife, discord, struggle. And the children of America did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of fighting all their life, struggling all their life, uh, discord in their families all their life. And he did it for seven years. And the children of Nigeria did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into struggle and strife and discord and disunity. Now you may say, well, Tiffany, I'm not doing evil in the sight of the Lord, but how many of you know that idolatry is anything that you love more than obedience to God? Idolatry is anything that you love more than your obedience to God. Some of you should write that down. Because, well, I can't, I, Tiffany, I've been trying to pray, but my business is really picking up. And I know I've been trying to get into prayer, but I really don't have the time for that. I'm too busy. You've made your business an idol. It is now that thing that you love more than you obeying God. I am a multimillionaire. There is nothing. I don't care what business don't work out. I'm not getting out of my prayer closet. Money. Well, Tiffany, if I don't work, I just be tired when I come home from work. As soon as I get down to pray, I immediately fall asleep. Anything loved more than obedience to God. Well, Tiffany, what about that man? He said he was going to marry me. What about that woman? I, I, can't, I seem to can't let her go. 
anything that you love more than obedience to God. Well, Tiffany, I'm really afraid to do this. I know, here's your favorite thing. Tiffany, God told me, God told me I needed to preach. God told me I needed to start doing lives. God told me I needed to really, God told me, but I'm not ready yet. Anything you love, including your fear, more than your obedience to God. Well, Tiffany, I just don't have a time. Check your screen time right now. Tell me how long you've been on social media. Anything you love more than your obedience to God. And so you see something that you thought was simple, idolatry, is what God considered evil in his sight. They were delivered to these spirits of strife, discord, disunity, and struggle for seven years. Seven years. And that's what I was saying at the beginning. If you're not careful, because obviously some people were born into this. If you're not careful, you'll start to think it's normal. It's just how things are. It's just how big mama in them was. It's just how my daddy in them was. This is normal. This is not normal. If you are living in a constant state of struggle, strife, disunity, it's not God and it's not normal. If you are living in a, in a it just, it's not normal and it's not God. And the crazy thing about this was they weren't the root cause of it. So are you telling me that I can be born into something and struggle in it when somebody a hundred years came at before me and erected this altar up? The answer is yes. It does not absolve you of the responsibility of being the one in your bloodline that tears it down. So when you go down, verse 3, and so it was when Israel had shown that the Midianites came up. I want you to just put your name in there. And so it was when, when you had started to sow and then strife came up and the children of the east came up against you. So here you are sowing. I mean, you sowing, girl. You sowing, homeboy. You sowing. You sowing. You sowing. And then strife comes. Somebody want to beef with you. Everybody's coming, all attack. Oh God, the devil is busy. That's a Midianite. You're saying those phrases because that's what your mama and them used to say, but it's really a demonic spirit. And what they did was, verse 4, and they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth. These spirits, they were people, but they were really spirits, came only when they were planting seeds. And when they came to plant the seeds, that's when they came and took the harvest up. So you feel like you're living a life of peace until you start sowing seeds. And you're like, where is my harvest? The Bible says in verse 3 that it destroyed the increase of the earth and left no sustenance for your name. Neither sheep nor ox. All of that was gone. When I looked up the word destroyed, it meant to rot. It meant to corrupt. It meant to pervert it. So I don't know what seeds you've been sowing, but if you've been sowing something and you've been reaping corruption, reaping perversion, reaping rotten fruit, that's the devil. And it says their increase, the fruit, their crop, the pr produce of their soil and left no sustenance. Sustenance means the preservation of life or reviving, which means that you're not even living in a realm of revival. You're not living in the spirit of revival where everything around you is alive, where everything around you is quickened, where the spirit of life, which is the Holy Ghost, is living on the inside of you. Everything you touch dies. What I thought was so fascinating was the word increase, the produce, the produce of the soil. It goes into blooming. And we talked about it at the last cover by God that you needed to make sure that your seeds were being planted in good soil. Soil that was healthy because we do know that there are some soils that were cursed. You'll find it at the end of this chapter where he said, and cursed is anybody who builds here. So I want you to ask yourself, what have you been sowing? This is a season of reaping harvests. And how many of you know that you can reap harvest good or bad? So this isn't just a prophetic word of, you're going to reap what you sowed. Oh, you are. And some of you need to cry out and beg God for mercy. If you've been reaping discord, if you've been reaping gossip, if you've been reaping wrecking havoc on somebody's reputation, 
if you've been sowing that, you will reap every bit of it that you sowed. You're going to reap it at a higher level, though. This is why these fasts are so important. Fasting is very powerful. It's a very powerful warfare tactic against the enemy. And prayers get answered like crazy during a fast. But one of my main purposes of fasting is to keep me low. Because what y'all not never going to see by the grace of God is him promote me. Him raise my influence. And because I have not dealt with the enemies of my soul, I have to fall from up here. We have proof of that in the book of Esther. Where he waited until Haman was promoted to put him back down. You think these people got away with what they did because you see them climbing the ladder and climbing promotion? No, this is just a setup from God. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. I done seen it. Don't let this little 120 fool you. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. I want you to go to the next verse. The Bible says in verse 7, And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites. Isn't that just like people? To cry out to God when it's too late. This is the difference of us being proactive and reactive. We need to start being a body who is more proactive, meaning that we can see ahead of time and say, you know what? I know my mother dealt with this spirit. I see my grandmother dealt with this spirit. I see my father struggle with this spirit. Before it touches me and mine, let me cry out to God now. Proactive. Somebody say proactive. But they were just like many of you. They were reactive. They waited until they got hit for seven years. Can you imagine being in so much derision from the spirit of strife that you couldn't even recognize that you needed help until seven years later? You got to be a little crazy to call out to God seven years later. The spirit of strife had to have sent confusion to your camp to call out to God seven years later. Verse 10. Because it wasn't until they cried out to God that verse 8 says, the Lord sent them a prophet, which said, thus saith the Lord of Israel, I, I mean, I, I brought you up out of Egypt. I, I, do y'all remember when I brought you out of the house of bondage? And remember when I delivered you into the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of everybody that oppressed you? Do you remember that? He said, remember I drove them out before you and I, I even gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your Father. I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. I know they think this is their land. I know you dwell in their land. But I just said, I'm your God. I said, I put you there. And I said, don't even be afraid of them. But you have not obeyed my voice. Isn't it funny that when they cried out to God, that's when God gave them the answer? Verse 11, and then it came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak tree, which was Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, the Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. Now I want y'all to, I need y'all to catch the revelation here. Because here comes Gideon. We ain't heard about him all chapter. The children of Israel cried out to God. The Bible didn't say Gideon did. It said the children of America cried out to God. It said the children of Nigeria cried out to God. The children of Israel cried out to God. And the angel of the Lord picked a person. He picked a man named Gideon. And he called that man a mighty man of valor. You are an answer to somebody's prayer, even when you don't feel qualified. I am an answer. My life is a sign, a miracle, and a wonder that I don't know who was crying out to God in prayer. I was minding my own business, fornicating and having a good time. Because how many of you know, it ain't always all that bad. I know we be lying to people and making it seem like we won't having fun out there. I was having a blast. But somebody was 
was crying out to God. And God said, hey, Tiffany, hey. And I was like, hey, Tiffany, I need you to wake up. I need you got some work to do. And I'm like, well, I ain't even saved. He said, well, you're saved now. Well, I'm not prepared. Well, I prepare who I called. Well, I ain't been in this long enough. Never again say you are just a child. Well, I'm a little nervous. Don't fear the faces of men. For I will put my word in your mouth. You are the answer to somebody's prayer. Gideon was minding his own business. Isn't it just like God to pick on people who are already busy? He was at work. You know, the Bible, they, uh, the Bible don't say, but somebody say, maybe the Bible say it. I ain't read all 66 books, prophetess. <laughs> but somewhere it say, an idle mind is the devil's playground. But I just think it's fascinating that God always picks the busy. He was busy. In verse 13, I think it's so powerful. And Gideon said unto them, oh my, first of all, let's go back to first of all, him calling him a mighty man of valor. Mighty means brave and strong. Valor, do you know wealth? It means valor. Mighty man of wealth. Y'all got to hear it. Don't forget I said that. Mighty man, mighty woman of wealth. Valor also means army. I need y'all to understand that when, when we go through the rest of this, he told Gideon, you're going to fight this one by yourself. How do you call me a mighty woman of valor and I got to go out there by myself? So Gideon asked some pivotal questions that I think were pretty fair. He said, God, if you're with me, then why is this all happening to us? Where are the miracles of our fathers that they told us of all this stuff that you've been doing and you raised the dead and all? We don't see that. Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now he said, he, he repeated what God said. Remember God said, the prophet said, he's God that brought you up out of Egypt. Gideon said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of strife. Verse 14, and the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this might, you shall save Israel. You shall save America. You shall save Nigeria from the hand of strife, from the hand of contention, from the hand of discord, from the hand of disunity. Have I not sent you? Have I? Have I not sent you? Who else are you going for? I, I'm God. I'll never forget how y'all talked about me like a dog when I went to Nigeria last year. You should have seen this email this lady sent me. She said, how you call yourself a woman of God and you going out to Nigeria not caring about all these people that died? Oh, y'all know I lit her up. Because the nerve of you to think that I'm supposed to bow to COVID. Because that's what she wanted me to do. She wanted me to be more fearful of death than COVID than what I heard God. I was so sure God said go to Nigeria. I'd rather, in my mind, I said I would rather go than not go. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. That's how obedient I try to be to God. And he said, have I not sent you? And I got on my face and I said, God, they killing everybody over there? You know, that's what they said. You know, I mean, I could fight one or two, but I'll probably go down after the eighth. Are you sure you're telling me to go? And he said, have I not sent you? Verse 15. Gideon said, oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? How am I supposed to do this? My family is poor, and I'm the least in my father's house. That angel called him those things that were not as though they already were. The angel of the Lord called him something that he didn't even see himself as being. He called this man a mighty man of valor. He called him a brave man of war. He called him a strong man of wealth. 
He said, you are a mighty man of a mighty army. And his response was, my family is poor. I'm the littlest, I'm the youngest, and I'm the most insignificant in my father's house. How could it be me? And the Lord said, surely I will be with you and you will kill every, every demonic spirit of strife as one man. I assume had he had not gone to God with all of those things he wasn't, God would have probably sent him with an army. But he said, since you doubted yourself, I'm going to make it undeniable whose hand was on your life. And the Bible says, it's, go, it's, it's so crazy. God said, he, he asked God for a sign. He said, God, if I now have found favor in your sight, can you show me a sign that you're talking to me? He was a little, a little like me. I mean, I can see God show, show me. God is having a full conversation, and I'm like, well, God, if it's you, can you just show me one more sign? He's like, let me give her 200 fly license plates so she know I ain't playing with her. God is not, you don't want to continue to ask God for signs or get into sign idolatry, but he's not mad at you for asking for one. You just don't want to get addicted to asking for them because you don't hear God clearly. And he said, depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee and bring forth a present and set it before you. And I say, tarry not until it come. You can read what happened there, but I'm going to go down to 23. And when Gideon perceived that it was an angel, because God answered him very loudly. The Bible says when Gideon perceived it was an angel. When Gideon perceived it was an angel, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord, for because I have seen an angel face to face, and the Lord said, Peace be unto you, and fear not, you are not going to die. This one is not unto death. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom until this day. 25, and it came to pass that in the same night the Lord said to him, I need you to go take your father's bullock and I need you to throw down the altar of Baal that your father has erected in this place. I need you to understand what God, God told him to throw down the altar of Baal. I don't know what altar your family has erected in your bloodline, but you see the fruit of it right now. So whether that was an altar of uh, adultery, whether there was an altar of lust, an altar of idol worship and witchcraft and things of that nature, you are responsible of tearing those demonic altars down, but that's not enough. You have to build an altar in its, to God in its place. Verse 26, and build an altar unto God with an offer of burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove. Now, obviously, in the new covenant, we don't offer God a, sacrifice, a real sacrifice because our temple is a sacrifice. We can offer God the sacrifice of praise. I, I love this saying. I heard this somewhere, and it said, you build an altar, you alter a nation. You build an altar, you alter a nation. If you're looking why our nation is so, you see pride everywhere, pride, 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 pride. When you really get a revelation of what that is, it's not just somebody being proud of their sexuality. Pride is the very thing that made the devil fall. They have it in your stores. They are inundating it with your favorite shops that you love to shop in. They are, they are aggressively pursuing you with pride, 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 pride. And you think, you know, when somebody puts something in your face for so long, it becomes a brand. It literally lowers your senses to it. So when you see it, you don't recognize that it's really a spirit of pride. You don't really re recognize that it's the devil at work. This is why you are afraid to use your rainbow emoji. This is why you're afraid to use it, because you don't want anybody to think that you're promoting pride. And then the death threats came. I love that Gideon, Bible says Gideon took some people. He had to do it at night because he was a little afraid. The Bible says, and when the men... When the men arose in the city early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down and another altar was built. And they said one to another, who did this? Who did this? I need, I think it's Gideon, son of Joash. 
And the men of the city said unto Joash, bring out your son so that he can die. We need to kill him off now. You know, those altars have demonic minions and people operating for them. This is why anytime you see me come against a stronghold, you see people come in my, um, in my comments. Those aren't just people in comments. Those are people that are, have erected because of an altar I'm tearing down. And now they're like, ah, ah, ah. Jesus, the death threats came because of, of that. Joash said unto all that stood against him, will you plead for Baal? Will you save him? What he said was, let me break it down to you in a Tiffany. First of all, and this is his father's altar. Can you imagine that once he broke down the altar, his father was able to see again? This is an altar his father built. The altar of Baal was his father's altar. And as soon as it was built, or as soon as it was destroyed, the Bible says that the people were like, we need to kill your son for destroying our altar. And their father, his father woke up out of the slumber he was in and said, well, if he's really God, he should be able to fight for himself. You don't have to kill my son. Let the one that broke into pieces kill my son. The Bible says, but the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Somebody said, the spirit of the Lord came upon, say your name. How many of you know that some things can only be done when the spirit of the Lord comes upon you? How many of you know that some things can only be destroyed when the spirit of the Lord comes upon you? And he blew a trumpet and everybody gathered around him. Verse 36, and Gideon said unto God, if thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as you've said, he asked him for another sign, another confirmation. And God granted him that. Can you go with me to Ezra chapter 1, verse 1? Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he may make a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing. Do you all understand what you just read? I, when God gave me this revelation, I was blown away. Let me say it to you one more time. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. I want you to know that Jeremiah gave this prophetic word over 200 years prior to this. So that the word of the Lord that was given 200 years ago might be fulfilled. The Lord had to stir up the spirit, lowercase s, in this man... And then he made a proclamation throughout all of his kingdom, and he put it also in writing. I want you to understand, because there's something, a big case S, which is the spirit of God, Holy Spirit. But here it says he stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, which is your natural man spirit. And when you're talking about that kind of spirit, I need to give you some type of revelation. Everybody just pray in the Holy Ghost till I find it. When you look up the word stir up, it means, now again, when you say stir up the spirit, in order for this prophetic word to come to pass, I don't know what God has promised you, I don't know what prophetic word needs to come to pass, but I almost guarantee you that you need favor with somebody for this thing to come to pass. So you actually want to study and, and memorize Ezra 1 because you need somebody's spirit to be stirred up so that this prophetic, prophetic word can be fulfilled. So when I say that this thing needs to be stirred up, when you're talking about stirring up somebody's spirit, it means to awaken them. It means to give this person courage. It means to make them excited. It means to lift up and raise up. It means to cause somebody to feel a strong emotion. It means a desire to do something. It means to awaken one from sleep. It means to activate the mind and understanding of a man. God, you promised me something. This person seems uncompliant. He's calling you. Remember, is not my word like fire? 
Is it not like a hammer that breaks this stronghold into pieces? God, this person has a strong, stony heart. Is not my word like a hammer that can break a stony heart into pieces? Father, they've been like that for years. Their mama was like that. Their granddaddy was like that. Is not my word like a hammer that will break this stony heart, that will break this stony situation, that will break this stronghold into pieces? All you need is the Spirit of God to stir it up. The Spirit of the person you need for this prophetic word to come to pass, the Bible says his word cannot return to him void. When I looked up the word spirit, again, this is lowercase s. This is not big case s. When I looked up the word spirit, it meant courage. How many of you know that the person you might need spirit stirred up needs the courage to do what you need them to do? It means mind. It means their emotions. It means their desires. It means their mental acts. It means their moral character. It means whirlwind. It means disposition as in troubled, bitter, unaccountable, uncontrollable impulse. That means that their spirit can't even sleep. They tossing and turning at night. They trying to figure out why they can't get no rest because you at night stir them up. Stir them up. Be a whirlwind in their room, God. Be a whirlwind in their room, God. Stir them up, God. Stir them up, Father. Stir them up so that your work can be fulfilled. Stir it up, God, so that your promise can be fulfilled. Stir it up, God, so that prophetic work can be fulfilled. Stir it up, God, so that the answer can come. Stir it up, God. When I looked up the word proclamation, because the Bible says they made, once his spirit was stirred up, the Bible says he made a proclamation. The word proclamation means an official announcement, especially one dealing with a matter of great importance. An official announcement, especially one dealing with a matter of importance. This person's spirit is going to be stirred up so much that they are going to make an official announcement on your behalf. Can I get a shout of praise? A proclamation is a decree. It's an order. You know a decree can't be changed. It's an order. It's a command. It's an announcement. It's a ruling. It's a declaration. It's a broadcast. And he also put it in writing. Go with me to Haggai chapter 1, verse 14. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shetel, governor of Judah. He stirred up the spirit of Joshua, son of Jodesh, the high priest. He stirred up the spirit of all the remaining people, all the remnant. And they came and did work in the house of God. He came and stirred up. He came and stirred up. When I looked up the word remnant, it means the people that were left, the people that had escaped, those that were remaining and had survived. Those that survived. Those that survived. And they came and did work. The definition of the work in, this, um, in the Hebrew was business, property, political, or religious, and ministry. Just in case y'all thought that it didn't apply to you, it meant business, property, political, or religious ministry. They came and got property. They came and did business. They came and worked in politics. They came and did their ministry duties in the house of, of the Lord of hosts, their God. The Lord of hosts, y'all, is the Lord God of the angel armies. It's Jehovah Sabaoth. That means that not only is your spirit being stirred up, but there are more for you than there are against you. There is a host of angels that are fighting on your behalf. Ezra chapter 1 tells us about the beginning of a recovery, but Haggai tells us about the continuation of the recovery. The beginning and the continuation both require our spirits to be stirred up. I'm getting ready to get off, but I want to say this. It is very important. It says how, well, I wrote down, how to cooperate with this, with this stirring of your spirit. And that is, number one, we need to set our mind on the spirit, Romans 8, 6. 
That means you don't let your mind wander. You don't multitask when you're with God. You learn to set your mind, fix your mind on the things of God. Focus your mind in the spirit by calling on the Lord, praying over his word, listening to his voice. One of, my, uh, one of my great friends, Prophet Edom, he's in Ghana, and he preached a powerful message. I've listened to it at least, at least 15 times this year, and that was when I was in Nigeria in, in April. That's when he ministered this message. And he was talking about being drunk in the spirit, and he said you're not drunk enough when you can feel the hits, when you can feel the blows. He said, when you can see what people are doing to you and doing about you, you're not drunk enough. I don't know about y'all, but I used to take them shots of Patron back like it was water. I know a thing or three about being drunk. You don't feel a thing when you're drunk. You feel it when you wake up, though. But that day before, I don't care what hit you, you don't even feel Your body goes numb. Some of y'all aren't drunk enough in the spirit. I don't care what's going on. As soon as, you, as, soon as, you, as soon as you get offended, I'm not drunk enough. As soon as I got the, as soon as I'm mad at what you did, I'm not drunk enough. I haven't broken over the wine and have partaken in his spirit. I need to be so drunk in the spirit, I need to be numb. You talk about me, le basu le de brakanda di apala da bando she kanda di apaya. Fill me with your spirit, God. Le basu le de brakadi apakaya. Ye de de le de basu re batari akaka. Drunk. They betrayed you. I feel it. I'm not drunk enough. Le banda le de basu le de brakanda di apakaya. Sometimes I wear my mask just to pray under my breath. Drunk. Number two, you exercise your spirit daily. You be governed by this thing. You cannot get a six pack exercising on leg day. How do you strengthen your spirit, man? How do you gain muscles? In the realm of the spirit, when you're not doing anything that strengthens your spirit, man, you have to exercise your spirit daily. Number three, fan into flame the gift of God. Fan it. Fan it. The more you fan fire, the, the wilder it gets. You fan it. Y'all, I'm telling you, when I got saved August 2015 in my shower, I the, the first ministry God took me into was a ministry of prayer and fasting. I couldn't stop praying. And every day, I think it's six years later, August would be six years later, I am still hungry for prayer. I don't care what, I don't care if I don't feel like it. There is no such thing. I understand my life depends on prayer. You fan it. You fan the flame. You keep the fire burning. The Bible says he did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Power is your will. He gave, us, he gave us our will, our emotion, and sobriety in our mind. Number four, take care of the feeding of our spirit and feeling of our spirit. Feeling, which means Paul's spirit was provoked when he saw the idols in Athens. And a lot of us ignore our feeling. A lot of us ignore what God is saying. But you have to make sure you're always checking in with that, checking your spirit about something. That is how you allow the stirring of the spirit to be evident in you forever. You also want to pray in the spirit. We talk about this all the time, but I'm going to forever talk about it. Praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Ephesians 6, 18. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open up my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel. Praying always. It means to make prayer and worship. Always means at the right time. So I'm always, I'm making prayer. You don't wait until you feel like praying. 
You make prayer. You make worship. And you do it at the right time, and it's always the right time. With all prayer, all supplication, the word supplication means whatever you're needing from God, whatever you want from God, whatever you're asking God, and supplication means um, a request, a petition in the spirit. He says, and watching, which means that you're staying awake. Watching. Thereunto with all perseverance. Perseverance means persistence in doing something despite the difficulty or delay in achieving that success. Hallelujah. We can stand for a second. Everybody just open up your voice and stir up the spirit. Ask God to stir up the spirit on the inside of you. Ask God to stir up the spirit on the inside of you. We have work to do in the kingdom of God. We have work to do in our families. We have work to do on this earth. Ask God to stir up your spirit. 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 Come on, come on, open up your mouth, open up your mouth. Come on, come on, come on, keep stirring, keep stirring. Open up your mouth. Come on, come on, come on. Father, we give you glory and we give you praise in the name of Jesus. We bless you for who you are, God. We bless you for what you're doing, God. We bless you for your power and your word. We bless you for your anointing. We bless you for the stirring. We bless you for the shifting. Come on, Zion, open up your mouth. We bless you, God, because you're doing a new thing, and now it shall spring forth. Somebody with a real praise, open up your mouth and give God glory right there. Come on, open up your mouth and give God glory. Open up your mouth and give God glory. Open up your mouth and give God glory. Praise him like you got victory. Praise him like you got power. Praise him like you got the overflow. Praise him like it's already done. Praise him like you're walking in it. Praise them like it's your time. Praise them like it's your season. Praise them like you're healed. Praise them like you're delivered. Praise them like you're set free. Praise them like you got power. Praise them like you got victory. Your deliverance is in your praise. Your deliverance is in your mouth. Your deliverance is in your sound. Your deliverance is in your hallelujah. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. How bad do you want it? How bad do you need it? How how bad do you need God to move? How bad do you need God to flow? How bad do you want to be free? How bad do you want to be healed? Somebody might just shut, 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 shut. Open up your mouth and give God glory. 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 Open up your mouth and give him power. Open up your mouth and give him praise. Praise him like you're healed. Praise him like you're delivered. Praise him like you're set free. Praise him like you got victory. Praise him like you got strength. Praise him like there's no chains. Praise him like there's nothing holding you back. Let everything that had breath praise ye the Lord. Somebody with fire, open up your mouth and give God glory. Somebody with a testimony, open up your mouth and give God glory. Somebody with a real praise, open up your mouth and give Him glory. 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 Out of your belly, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water your breakthrough is in your mouth your power is in your mouth life and death is in the power of your tongue you shall decree it it shall be established you shall decree it it shall be so let the redeemed of the Lord let the redeemed of the Lord 
Lord, let them say so. What I say, it is so. Open up your mouth and shout glory. Shout glory. Shout glory. Shout glory. Yeah. Look at the person beside you and tell them, neighbor, I hope you know you sitting beside a praiser. I only have one rule for tonight. When I praise, you praise. When I holler, you holler. When I dance, you dance. When I shout, you shout. When I run, you run. When I holler, you holler. Praise them all by yourself. Don't let me praise all by myself. Don't let me dance all by myself. Cause when you shout when I shout, when you holler when I holler, when you dance when I dance, when you go in when I go in, when I get a miracle, you go get a miracle. When I get a breakthrough, you go get a breakthrough. Tell your neighbor you sit beside the right one. You picked the right one. You got the right one. I won't let you dance by yourself. I won't let you holler by yourself. I won't let you shout by yourself. I won't let you go in by yourself. When my children get saved, your family coming out. When my husband be delivered, your family coming out. When I get my money, you go get your money. Somebody pray. Open up your mouth and give it glory. I see a neighbor shouting and she's shouting by herself. I see somebody dancing and they dancing by themselves. I see somebody. The only people that can give God a 12 second dance right there are the people that know in July I'm gonna see my miracle. The only people that can give God a 12 second dance right there are the people that know by this time tomorrow I'm walking in my miracle. By this time tomorrow you're looking at a different woman. You're looking at a different man. You're looking at a different child. I won't be the same. Hey, yeah, yeah. Get your Bible. I'm going to read two scriptures, and I'm going to go sit down. Deuteronomy 11. He caught my tongue. Hmm. Hmm.
You gon' mess around and dance yourself into a paid in fool. You gon' mess around and shout yourself into a paid in fool. Paid in fool. Do the right. Deuteronomy. Ha! Okay, Deuteronomy. 11. Ha! Deuteronomy 11, verses 10 through 12, from the amplified version ha! of the... See, let me explain something to y'all. See, I can talk to you because I believe you can, you can pick up what I put down. About 11 months ago, I had COVID. Y'all don't want to handle church. I had pneumonia in my left lung. I was on oxygen, on breathing treatments for 26 days. Y'all don't want to have no church up in here. Y'all looking at me like I'm weird. So when you see me holler, when you see me dancing, that's for my right lung. When you see me holler, that's for my left lung. Let everything, let everything, let everything. The doctors told my husband he had to make a decision on what his life and all seven of our children and eight grandchildren would look like if I weren't there. My praise just may irritate. Some folk who need a reason and a check to praise God. See, I don't need none of that to bless you. Deuteronomy 11, 10 through 12 from the Amplified Version. The Bible says... For the land which you are entering to possess is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come. I'm going to read it again. The place that you're going go look like what you just came out of where I'm going ain't gonna look like what I just walked out of I wish I had somebody that'll just take one step cuz where I'm headed it's not gonna look like what I just walked out of what I'm getting ready to walk into it ain't gonna look like You, where you sow, hey, where you sowed your seed and watered it, uh, of watered with it, with water, watered it with your foot like a garden of vegetables. Here's where we shout. But the land in which you are entering in, about to cross over and possess, a land possess, not own, not lease, not rent, not sublease. Come on. It's got your name on it. It ain't nobody else's name. It don't need nobody else's signature. Let me prophesy to somebody. You get ready to go to a closing. Let me prophesy to somebody. You get ready to sign the check. To 
three people around you and say approve, approve, approve. Approve, approve, approve. Approve, approve, approve. Approve, approve, approve. How did I get approved? Cause I survived Egypt. How did I get approved? I made it out of Egypt. The land, you getting ready to cross? Cause when it's mine, I ain't got to beg for it. When it's mine, I ain't got to beg you for nothing that belong to me. When I say drop it off, have my stuff ready. When it's mine, I ain't got to beg. A land of hills and valleys. Here's the second place where we shout. This land drinks water from the rain of heaven, a land for which your God cares. The eyes of the Lord are always on it. Y'all don't know when to shout. The eyes of the Lord are always on it. Here's the last time we gonna shout. And if your neighbor don't shout this time, get your purse, your Bible, your backpack, and just move away from them janky jokers. Oh my God. Here it is. The eyes of the Lord are always upon it from the beginning of the year to the end of the all 365 days God got his eye on it all 365 days the rainwater of heaven look at your neighbor tell your neighbor this one word make sure your neighbor go up in a praise because when your neighbor shout both of y'all be dead free by the end of the year shout look at your neighbor and shout congratulations 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 Congratulations! Congrats! Open up your mouth and shout! Congratulations! This is a congratulations party! This is a congratulations party! This is a trunk packing party! This is a housewarming party! This is a house blessing party! This is a pre baby shower! This is a pre bridal shower! Here it is. In the text, the Bible says, for the land which you are entering into possess is not like Egypt, where you had to work hard, where you had to struggle, where you were so used to the struggle, where you were so used to the pain. God says in this next platform, beloved, you're not going to birth from a place of pain, but you will birth from a place of healing. Now, y'all don't know when to shout, because you think that struggle means that you're more anointed. Struggle don't mean that you're more anointed. Struggle don't mean that God is with you. Y'all don't know when to shout. Look at your neighbor, prophesy over that neighbor. Look at him real good and say, neighbor, the struggle is over. I'm not making no more dumb decisions. I'm not, you know, not including God in my decisions. I will include God in everything I do. God, what you want me to wear today? What you want me to drive today? Which route you want me to take to work? What you want me to cook for my children? My life is not my own. What do you want to do? In and so here it is. You cannot handle Canaan like you steal in Egypt. Uh, you cannot act like a visitor in a harvest that you own. Uh-huh. Will you look at somebody and let them know I paid for this. I 
pay for everything I'm getting ready to walk into. Baby, because see, some of us in here, we first generation anointed folks. Some of us in here, we first generation millionaires. We didn't come from no good stock. We came from a family of thugs, hustlers, drunkheads, crackheads, knew how to shoot them up, knew how to count stacks. Y'all don't want to have no church up in here. We come from the streets. Y'all don't want to have no church. And see, that's how God is getting ready to use many of us because we ain't scared and we, my God, to go back to where we were and look at a devil in the face, stand up like Moses with so much authority and power and tell that devil, let my people go. Is there anybody in here other than me? You in here tonight because you snatching out your sister. You in here tonight because you snatching out your brother. You in here tonight because you snatching out your family members. I wish I could tell you that this was all about you, but it's so much bigger than you. It's about your bloodline. It's about your generation. I pay for it, 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 I pay for it. I got papers on this season. Y'all don't want to have no church. I got deeds and keys. Understand some of y'all. Now it's going to make some of y'all a little uncomfortable. But I used to have a Rollo. Come on here, somebody. Anybody ever dated a Rollo before? I used to have a Rollo. Rollo was mine as long as he was in my house. Rollo belonged to me as long as he was in my presence. But when Rollo was not with me, Rollo belonged to the streets. Y'all don't want to have no church. But when I got tired of Rollo and all of his foolishness, when I put Rollo out, I didn't let put Rollo out and told him he can keep the keys. I said, no, Joker, drop my keys off too. Y'all don't want to have no church. And see, the reason why the enemy can come in with a lot of your lives is because you put him out. But he still got the key. He can just walk in whenever he want. But I came to kill a witch tonight. Is there anybody in here other than me who understands tonight I'm taking back my keys? Tonight I'm taking, you ain't gonna have my heart. You ain't gonna have my mind. You ain't gonna have my body. And you sure ain't gonna have my future. Drop my keys out. So you cannot act like uh, you're in, um, you cannot act like you're still in Egypt when you are really in Canaan. Don't act like you stole it. Baby, you sold for this. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Tell the person beside you, I didn't steal it, I sold for it. Y'all don't want to have no church up in here. See, you're stingy. That's why you ain't going to get nothing. Y'all don't want to have no church up in here. And so the Bible says in verse 11, the Bible says, but the land in which you are entering in to cross over to possess a land of hills and valleys drinks water from the rains of heaven not only did you sow for it Lord have mercy but in this next mm -hmm, six months get used to this it will be supernaturally supplied <laughs> Lord, you talk, you, you all see some of y'all sitting beside somebody who's still trying to add up their check. Baby, I don't know how these bills getting paid. I don't know how I bought it. I don't know how I got it. It ain't my job to figure it out because this season that I'm in is supernaturally supplied. Tell your neighbor, this one is on God. If God don't do it, it ain't gonna get done. If God don't make the way, I ain't gonna walk in it. If God gonna give it to me, I just ain't gonna have it. This one is on. When it is super naturally supplied, there is something in agriculture class called a bumper harvest. Somebody shout bumper harvest. Mm -hmm. A bumper harvest in agriculture, a bumper crop is when large crops of agricultural produce has been produced under extreme yet rare conditions. It means that an abundance of crop is produced under extreme conditions. Conditions like torrential rainfall, short spring, unseasonably long summer, a mild or a frost frost 
God's free autumn of in a bumper harvest, minimum effort produce maximum results. Woo, glory to God. Minimum effort, now minimum physical effort produce maximum results. Not minimum spiritual effort, but minimum physical and mm -hmm, produce maximum results. Scientists cannot predict a bumper harvest. Chemical growth hormone cannot lead to or guarantee a bumper harvest. A bumper harvest is not manipulated by man. A bumper harvest is a supernatural time and space when the soil favors the seed. It is a supernatural agreement that has absolutely nothing to do with the farmer. It is agreement with the soil and the seed. Lord, y'all don't know when to shout up in here. It is a supernatural thing. No hormones predict a bumper harvest. You can't add enough fertilizer to the soil to predict a bumper harvest. A bumper harvest has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with God, your seed, and the ground. Y'all don't know when to shout up in here. The Bible says, in Psalm 67 and 6 then the earth shall yield her increase God even her own God shall bless us the Bible says in Psalms 126 verses 1 through 6 when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion we were like them that dream prophecy number 3 you are getting ready to live your dream this dream is not a nightmare I'm talking about you're getting ready to become the you that you see in your prophecy you're getting ready to become the you that the enemy don't ever want you to walk into. Now, for some of you, you can't shout right there because you don't even know who you are anyway. You're too busy trying to be everybody else. Lord, I wish I would try to be somebody else. I'm so glad that I talk the way I talk. I preach as hard as I preach. I sweat like I sweat. I ain't scared of no demon, no witch. No, y'all don't know when to shout up in here. Because if I was a fool for the enemy, I'd be an even bigger fool for God what my cutthroat folk at who ready to fight a demon they were like them that dream our mouth was filled with laughter our tongue was singing then the heathens the crackheads the hustlers began to prophesy and testify saying that the Lord has done great things for them the Lord has done great things for us and we are glad here's where we shout for the seventh time they that sow in tears shall reap in Come on here, somebody. I'm not talking to some folk that pillar ain't never been wet, but I'm talking to some folk that cried on their way to church tonight. I'm talking to some folk that when you logged on in your living room, you just wiped tears from your eyes. I'm talking to some folk who said last night, God, I don't know how I'm going to make it out of this. Well, God said that those that sowed in tears, you ain't going to reap it like you sowed it. You're going to reap in joy. That goeth forth, weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless mm -hmm, come again, rejoicing with bundles. Uh, touch a person beside you uh, and say, bundles are on the way. Uh, I'm not talking about no, Barib no Brazilian, Peruvian, or Malaysian. Uh, uh -huh, but what God uh, is releasing back into your life, uh, you sowed it in one dimension, uh, but a bumper harvest coming back. Uh, the Bible said in Joel uh, 2 and 26, uh, you will have plenty to eat. Uh, you will eat until you're full. Uh, you will praise the name of the Lord thy God uh, who has worked wonders for you. Uh, my people will never ever be ashamed again. Uh -huh. That's the last day. Yesterday was the last day you're going to hold your head down, being embarrassed by what you've been through. Hold your head up, girl. Last day was the last day that you will be embarrassed by your testimony. God says he is removing the shame that's associated with your last name. Honor is coming back to your house. Honor is coming back to your last 
name. The Bible says in Leviticus 25 and 19, then the land will yield large crops. You will eat your fill and live securely. Glory be to the most high God. In it, in other words, what God is about to give to you, beloved, you ain't got to worry about no witch coming and sabotaging it. The spirit of sabotage is destroyed. We issue a cease and desist in the realm of the spirit. Find you a neighbor with the Holy Ghost and tell that neighbor whatever the devil was going to do, he should have did it before July because now it's too late. Touch two people around you and shout too late, 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 too late. You should have killed me while you had me. Too late, too late, too late. You should have let COVID took me out. Too late, too late, too late. You should have had me in a headlock and stomped the devil out of me. But it's too late, too late. I got up and I didn't get up weak. I got up stronger, better, wiser, more anointed with power and the glory. Somebody shout yeah! So here it is, bumper harvest, bumper harvest, bumper harvest. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord are always. Mm -hmm. I declare in the name of Jesus that you will not wrestle with insomnia another night. Baby, he that keepeth Israel neither slumber nor sleep. Both of y'all ain't got to be up. Go on, go to bed because God said, I got this. God said, I got this. Go tell three people around you, God said, he got this. That was the wrong neighbor. They don't know when to give God praise. Find you somebody else and shout neighbor. Congratulations is your testimony. Congratulations, that's your story. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations on surviving what should have took you out. My God in heaven, find you somebody with a real praise and shout neighbor. Find you somebody with the Holy Ghost and shout neighbor. I'm holding your hand, but you're not holding the hand of nobody average. You're not holding the hand of nobody weak. You're holding the hand of an overcomer. You're holding the hand of a survivor. Grab your neighbor, shake your neighbor. Pull them up on their feet. Y'all ain't pulling nobody. Pull that neighbor up. Pull them up on their feet. Tell that neighbor you can't die here. You won't quit here. You won't be destroyed here. It won't end like this. Cause God is getting ready to flip the script on your behalf. I hasn't seen, hey, ear hasn't heard. Neither has it entered to the hearts of men what God is getting ready to do just for you. Bye-bye struggle, bye-bye pain, bye-bye disappointment, bye-bye heartache, bye-bye heaviness, bye-bye to the enemy, every generational curse, whatever ran in my family just ran out. Whatever dominated my family won't stand after tonight. If God be for me, he's greater than any witch, any warlock, any demon spirit, any strong man. Shout yeah, yeah. I feel like preaching. Shout yes. Congratulations, put it on your post, put it on your Facebook status, put it on your Twitter account. I'm approved, I got the green light, I'm going higher, I'm going deeper, I'm stretching out, I, he's enlarging my territory. Many are the affliction of the righteous.
Yes. But God will, God will deliver them out of the mouth. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory, to the glory, to the glory that shall be revealed, shall you? Yeah, go touch three people and shout congratulations, congratulations, we made it, we overcame by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony. Everybody standing. Everybody get up. Get up at your seat. God get ready to give you back your wind. God get ready to give you back your strength. God get ready to give you back your power. You get ready to take back your authority. You get ready to take back your wind. Take back your keys. Take back your power. Snatch it off. Drop it off. Give it here. Yeah, 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 yeah
Open up your mouth and shout it, yeah. Oh, no, 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 Mamma, mamma, could really cut the devil, hold mamma. She turned it in my hand and I'm a hot. Yeah, you go, don't, 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 Some of you looking at me and I ain't got your answer. Look to Jesus. your God. I won't wrestle God. I won't go back and forth. I give you a yes. I lay down my will. I 
I lay down my desires. I lay down what I want and I pick up Jesus. I pick up Christ. I pick up your will, God. I'm tired of going back and forth. I'm tired of struggling. But open up your mouth and give God a yeah. Yeah. Come on, Zion. Open up your mouth and shout, yes, Lord. Shout yes for the babies that ain't been born yet. Shout yes for the generation that's coming through your lawns. Shout yes for the next woman. Shout yes for the next man that's coming up in your bloodline. This is a brand new yes. This is a sanctified yes. This is a consecrated yes. This is a repented yes. God, I repent. I let it go. I release it. I don't want it. Open up your mouth and give God a yes you're not too old your time ain't past healing in your body healing in your mind your healing is connected to your yes your breakthrough is connected to your yes open up your mouth and shout yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, for real. I'm not going to change my mind. I'm not going to go back on my yes. I'm not going to go back on my yes. Creating me a clean heart, Lord. Creating me a renewed mind, Lord. Restore my mind. I forgive my mama. I forgive my daddy. I forgive who divorced me. I forgive who dropped me. I let them go. And I give you a yes. Open up your mouth and shout it out. Some of you standing and you need to be kneeling. Some of you standing and your wheels standing in the way. Get on your face before God. Cry out and tell him yes. We can't be lazy with our yes. This is a consecrated yes. This is a brand new yes. Yes, I want you, God. Yes, I need you, God. Yes, I got to have you, God. I'm saying yes to my future. I'm saying yes to the next generation. I'm opening up my mouth and giving you a yes. Yes, I want you. Yes, I want you. Yeah. I want you for real. Yeah. I don't want the stuff that don't have you. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I want to be filled, oh God. I want to be filled with your spirit. I want your spirit, Lord. I want your holy fire. Remove the strange fire. Remove the contaminated fire. Get the strange fire off my altar. I consecrate my fire. I repent for the strange fire. Creating me a clean fire. Yeah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I'm not alone. I got you, Lord. I got you, Lord, and you got us surrounded. Open up your mouth and shout, yeah. Open up your mouth and shout, yeah. 
there. Don't let your yes get weak. 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 Come on, Zion. Open up your mouth and shout, yeah. Yes. 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 God saving your children. Yes. Yes, God. This next yes is for your babies. This next yes is so your children won't go through what you went through. Open up your mouth and shout it out. won't wrestle with what you wrestle with. They won't see the back of a squad car. They won't see the table. They won't see the jail cell. They won't see defeat. Shout it out. This next every tumor, every growth in your body, every infirmity in your body, every hernia, thank you, Father, every ungodly bleed in your family, ungodly bleed in your body, unusual bleeding. This yes next, get ready to dry up the blood in the name of Jesus. You won't need a hysterectomy. You won't need that. God said, I'm healing your inside. Open up your mouth and Give God a yes! Give him 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 a yes! This next yes is breaking cycles. It's destroying cycles. Every ungodly cycle in your family. When I count to three, open up your mouth and give God a yes. He's stopping the cycle. One, two, three, shout it out. Shout it out. Shout it out. Real men shout yes. Real men shout yes. Real women shout yes. Real women shout yes. Open up your mouth and shout yes. Every cycle broken, every cycle destroyed, every cycle disrupted, every cycle interrupted. It won't go another step. Open up your mouth and shout yes! February 23rd, this year, I didn't know that a yes could be tested. I didn't know that your yes could come under attack. Some of us been in storms, not because we disobeyed God, but we've been in storms because we told God yes. We've been in storms because we trusted him. And if the enemy can get us, he'll go for where our heart is. February 23rd this year. God, I love you. Yes, Lord. 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 I got a text from my oldest daughter, who's 26. I got a text, and she said, Mama, God is talking to me. And I said, well, praise God. So at 2.30, 
my son-in-law and my um my son-in-law and the, the, the husband of my 31-year-old daughter. He texted, he called my husband and he said, Pop, I got a massage today at the country club. And he said that I noticed that the lady who was doing my massage, it, it, it felt so, it was so relaxing. I had dozed off, but then I noticed that she wasn't massaging my chest and I peeped open my eyes and he said that I saw her making a circle on my chest. So he said he got up, went to the locker room. Another member of the country club said, um, did whatever her name was, did she do, do, do your massage? He said, yeah. He said, she's real good, but she's weird. He said, yeah. The, uh, the other member said, I believe she in that witchcraft, but I don't really know. But she's so good at her job. She massages you, make you so relaxed that all your defenses are down. All of everything, you're so relaxed because she massaging you and putting whatever oils that she got in those little containers on your body. And so my son-in-law said, well, I think that she was doing that because I have the 23rd number of Psalm tattooed on my body. So when he told my husband that, my husband told me, me and my husband instantly went into warfare. We started renouncing. We started, we started breaking down. We started rebuking. We started casting out. I called the intercessors and I said, pray for my oldest daughter and her husband and their four children. Because my, my last grandson had just been born a couple of weeks ago. And when he was born, the umbilical cord, my daughter had an at-home birth. And so the, when, she, when the baby was born, the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck. And he didn't breathe for the first 10 minutes of his life. And so me and my husband, we instantly thought this is an attack on my youngest grandson and my oldest daughter and my son-in-law. So we start praying. Okay, that was at 2.30. We start praying. My husband asked, what's the lady? name. We looked up the woman's name on that good old blue app. Y'all don't want to have no church. Back up, baby. Y'all don't want to have no church. We looked up her name. Come to find out this woman is a high priestess in the church of Satan. This woman trains witches on how to be witches. Y'all don't want to have no church up in here. Let me tell you what we do. We have an institute called Kingdom Sniper Institute where we train people on how to intercede and pray. And so, y'all don't want to have no church. You're going to miss it. 2.30, we rebuking, called the intercessors, told the intercessors to pray for my oldest daughter and son-in-law. 4.30, one of the intercessors called me back and said, Give me all seven of your children's name. Give me all eight of the grandchildren's name. We gonna pray for the whole family. Y'all still don't know when to shout. See, you better get you some folk around you that can hear God when you can't hear God. You better get you some folk around you that got some strategies. And no, see, y'all looking for folks that want to go to lunch and brunch. See, that's the problem. You go on to brunch when you need to be going to prayer. Y'all don't want to have no church up in here. You getting drunk off mimosas. Y'all don't want to have no church up in here. Four thirty. Intercessor said, "Give me all the kids' name." Gave him a ha. Gave him all the kids' name. Six twenty-five. I get a phone call from Memphis Fire Department. I live in Memphis, Tennessee. Saying, "Get to." They told me what intersection to get to, and then he said, "Well, no, go to the hospital." My daughter, my twenty-six-year-old daughter. Five-month-old grandbaby, three-year-old grandbaby, put the picture on the screen. Hold the doors, I'm about to run. My children, 
my baby. Now, let me tell you about this daughter who was in this accident. This is the daughter that I call Sunshine. When I was pregnant with Sunshine, the doctors told me when I was 16 weeks pregnant that she was going to be born severely retarded with Down syndrome. I had an amniocentesis that confirmed that she had Down syndrome. I was in the Army station at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, Texas. They told me to have a late-term abortion at 17 weeks pregnant because I'm in the Army at the time, and it was going to be hard to care for a baby that was severely retarded. It was going to be hard to care for a baby who wouldn't live past birth. I said, I don't care if this baby is born with 12 eyes and 17 toes. She will always be my sunshine. So I started calling her sunshine when I was pregnant with her in the womb. Before she had her real name, she heard the name sunshine. I never said Down syndrome. I never said death. I never came into agreement with it. I said, God, if you allow me to get get this baby. You are big enough God to keep this baby. My grandmother in Memphis, Tennessee sent me some blessed oil. I began to anoint my belly, began to speak life over my belly when I was pregnant with this little girl. I was nothing but about 19 years old. Y'all don't want to have no church up in here. And so when my baby was born, when the doctors told me she was going to be Down syndrome, when they confirmed through amniocentesis that she would not live past birth, my baby was born nine pounds, 14 ounces. What nothing wrong with her. My sunshine, y'all still don't know when to shout. This same baby sunshine, when she was in the first grade, she was reading on the fifth grade level. That same baby sunshine that the doctor said would be Down syndrome, when she took the ACT for the first time in the ninth grade, she scored a 31. That same Down syndrome baby that I named sunshine that the doctor said would live, went to school with hundreds of thousand dollars in scholarships to be an engineer. Y'all don't want to have no church. But if the devil can't get you, he'll go after your seed. When she was in her first year of college, she got strung out on cocaine. Y'all don't want to have no church. Lord, have mercy. The preacher's daughter, here I am running coast to coast, east coast, west coast, saving all the folks' children and my own child just strung out on dope and going to hell. Y'all don't want to have no church. When my baby got strung out on dope, when my baby was in jail, when I had to find out my baby was locked up in jail while I'm on the road preaching the gospel. Y'all don't want to have no church up in here. And I get a mug shot with my baby's face on it. She in jail. And I'm walking around here telling folk Jesus saved and my own child in jail. Y'all don't want to have no church. So this same sunshine, February 23rd, the car flipped over three times. She was airlifted, transported to the hospital with 14 broken bones. Her spine, oh God, I thank you. Six broken bones in her spine, three in her neck, three broken bones in a rib, a concussion. My three-year-old grandbaby, both of her femurs fractured, her knee fractured, and a, her neck, two bones in her neck fractured. Y'all don't want to have no church. My five-month-old grandbaby, cracked skull. Y'all don't want to have no church. Both of her legs, both of her femurs fractured. February 23rd of this year, not last year, not 12 years ago. February 23rd, five months ago. Y'all don't want to have no church up in here. My God, don't you tell me about the power of a yes. Y'all don't want to have no church up in here. Five months ago, that's Bella. After going through three surgeries, my three-year-old grandbaby. Watch this. Hold on. We've been taking care. This is my fifth time preaching in 16 months. One, because when I got sick, other time when I had to take care of my children, that, that I'm taking care of my children, my daughter and her babies. Lord, help me in here. Taking care of four broken legs at home. Y'all still don't want to have no church. 
Sunshine is in an apparatus that her, her neck and her spine is all stabilized so that she cannot watch this, y'all. Somebody going to catch this and your whole life about to be saved. She has an order issued by her neurologist called a BLT. No bending, no lifting, and no twisting. She has an order, mandatory orders, for the next seven months, y'all, for the next three months now, that she cannot bend, she cannot lift, and she cannot twist. So God strategically got her in a position that she can only look one direction. Some of y'all going to miss when the shout. She can't look to the back. She can't look to the left. She can only look straight ahead. I will look unto the hills from where which cometh my house? So if the devil can't get to you, he'll try to get to who you love. He'll try to go to the one. Watch this. That's got the greatest oil on their life. He'll try to take out the one. Y'all don't y'all still see here. You don't you give your baby up. Don't you turn your baby loose to the wolves. Don't you give your child over to the witch. The witch can't have your son. The witch can't have your daughter. Shut it up. So, put the picture with the three up on the screen. Some of y'all, y'all, y'all need a million dollars to praise God. Y'all need a million dollars to bless God. I don't need all of that. Because all I got to do is look at that black car and then look at them smiling right there. And I have to remind the devil, my yes still works. I still give God. Yes, somebody open up your mouth and shout yes, shout yes for your children, shout yes for your babies, shout yes for your future, shout yes to life, shout yes to destiny, shout yes to liver, shout yes to deliverance, shout yes to deliverance, shout yes to deliverance. Somebody open up your mouth. Your baby will testify. Your children will testify. Your family will testify. I wish I had somebody that will open up your mouth and give God a yes. Give him a yes in this house. 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 I feel God in here. Give him a yes in this house. Give him a yes in this house. Grab you a neighbor. Grab you somebody that's going to help you dance. Grab you somebody that's going to help you dance. Grab you somebody that's going to help you shout. Grab you somebody that want to see you make it. Grab you somebody that want to see you come out. Grab you a dance partner. Grab you a praise partner. And shout neighbor. This yes, this praise is for my children. This praise is for your babies. Because when God healed my children, he going to save your children too. The accident can't take them. The two gunshots won't take them. The bullets won't take them. The police won't take them. The system won't have them. The drugs won't take them out. Because with this next praise, with this next holler, with this next yeah, yeah, it's going to save my children. One can put to flight a thousand, two can put two thousand to flight. What two or three are gathered, he's right there. He's right there. He's right there. He's right there. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me, that I'm his child, a thousand may fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy hand. Though he slay me, though he slay me, though he... 
I still give him a yes. 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 I still. When I count to three, praise for your neighbor. Dance for your neighbor. God gonna save them. God gonna restore them. God gonna bring them out. One, two, three, shout it out. We don't let friends praise God by themselves. We don't let friends dance by themselves. We don't let people dance by themselves. If you got a real praise, you don't need music. Go for what you know for the next 12 seconds. Up above my head, I hear music. Praise them at your house.
Prophetess, come here. Live, 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 live. Yes. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Get Tiff a mic, prophetess a mic. Get her a mic, please. Yeah! Okay. All right. All right. Okay. You're going to prophesy. All I don't know how to do is prophesy the word. I don't know. You know, y'all know some of y'all call folk names. I tell them what they have for breakfast this morning and tell them what they dog name and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give you the word. Cause if you can't shut off the word, you ain't gonna shout because you know your own dog name. That's right. You're gonna read Zechariah nine. Oh! You're gonna read Zechariah nine, eleven through thirteen, from the Message version of the Bible. You're gonna read it with power. You're gonna read it slow. All right. You're gonna read it with so much authority. Because when you release the words out your mouth, some get ready to leap into the lives of every cousin in here and online. When you read this, this prophetic word that God is saying, concerning, help my mind on a Sunday. Oh, concerning, covered by God. You're going to read it with power and authority. You're going to respond to the word. Turn the lights on so I can see. You're going to respond to the word. As the woman of God reads Zechariah, don't you go put it up on your phone. You're going to write the little note down. You're going to go look at it later on when you get home. You're going to listen to her say it now. When the one of God reads Zechariah 9, verses 11 through 13 from the message version of the Bible, something getting ready to jump off in your life. And watch this, y'all. For those of us that catch it and run with this word, watch this. Manifestation happens at the speed of your faith. If you got 12 year faith, you're gonna have 12 year manifestation. If you got 30 year faith, oh, you're gonna have 30 year manifestation. But if you got that Hebrews 1, 11 and 1 type of faith, that now! Okay. Read, and you, because of my blood covenant with you, I will release your prisoners from their hopeless cells. Come home! You hope-filled prisoners, this very day, I declare this very day, today, right now, right now, right now, right now, today. Y'all don't know when to shout. The Bible didn't say next week. Watch this. A bonus is the extra added on top of what you was already going to get. Y'all don't know when to shout up in here. He said, I'm releasing a double bonus, a double bonus. Somebody shout double bonus, double, double bonus. bonus, double bonus, double bonus. And everything, everything, all of it, everything. All of it, all of it, all of it, all of it, everything you lost, 
return twice over. Open up your mouth and shout. It's coming back twice over. It's coming back twice over. It's coming back twice over. If I lost one thing, double coming back. If I lost one career, double coming back. If I lost one house, double the property, double the salary, double the anointing, double the revelation, double the vision, double the faith, double the strength. Touch everybody around you and shout double, 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 double. Shout double, shout double, shout double. I may have lost one, but double coming back. One was taken, double returning. I see double, I see double, I see double, I see double, I see double. Yeah, double, 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 double. You got to say it until you get it in your spirit. You better say it until you see double. You better say it until you cross out. You better say it. If you at home, you better be saying double in your bedroom. You better get up and walk around your house and shout double. You better walk around that apartment like you living in double the square footage. You better walk around. Double. 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 Double, 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 double. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes, God. This atmosphere is supernaturally charged. It ain't because of me. Ooh. It's because of your demand. It's because of your level of expectancy. What God is releasing in your life, it ain't based on how long you've been saved, how fluent your tongues are. It ain't based on nothing. Ooh. It's like a bumper harvest. It's a supernatural agreement between the atmosphere, the seed and the soil. Y'all don't know when to shout. It's when the seed says, I favor. That soil says, I favor the seed that you sow. Yeah. Everybody who can, who's in this building. Ah! Who online, look, every cousin that's online. I know what God has told me to sow, and I obey God. I'm in a season, y'all let me tell y'all something. I'm in a season right now where I trust God with everything. Man, let me tell you something. I ain't never trusted God the way I trust God now. Baby, I know the power of a seed. I saw it on that black car. Y'all don't know when to give God a real praise in here. I know the power that comes in obeying God. Woo! I know the power. Who shanda? When God says, when God said pray and you pray right then on the spot. When God says so and you don't wait until Sunday when you get in a building to sow, but you go get the give, the file, or the PayPal, or the text to give, and you sow right there on demand because you obey God. You sow in the unction. You don't wait until you get an opportune time. You sow right there on the spot. Somebody in here shout, I'm an on-demand giver. <laughs> on the spot. Serve on sight. On the spot. 
I know what the Lord has told me to give. I know what the Lord has told me to sow in this atmosphere. There's something on that woman of God's life. You sweet. When you see your future, I don't care if you if I don't care if you was a if you were a man and your, if you see your future on a woman, you better sow into that woman's life. Amen. When you see your future reflected in somebody's life, Amen. Lord have mercy. Amen. If God allowed me to see what He showed me concerning my life in that woman of God's life, I would be crazy not to sow. She is in a supernatural phen a phenomenon. Defy odds. Defy logic. I know what God told me. So the, the Lord told me to sow a thousand. I'm sowing a glory seed. That's a thousand dollars. There are at least, uh, there are a bunch of us in here that can join me with that thousand dollar seed. Some of us in here, we can even do more than that. Whatever the Lord lays on your heart, you sow that. Now you ain't sowing for no miracle. You can't sow for no miracle, are you? Come on here. But when you are in an atmosphere like this, when you are in an environment, an experience, when you have exposure like this, Lord have mercy. We have to sow into the anointing. Sow into the word that's in this house. The ways to give are on the screen. Those of you who are joining me with that $1,000 seed, you ain't got to stand up and wave your hand and nothing like that. Whatever the seed the Lord lays upon your heart, it may be 100000 You obey God. Manifestation, manifestation happens at the speed of your faith. When you have your seed in your hand, we know we're all ready to sow because we're all standing and waving our seed. Wave your device. You're sowing by cash, check, online, or whatever it is. Wave your phone. Stand, stand, and just start waving. Wave it, wave, 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 wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it. Wave it. Wave it, 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 wave it. Put your number in there, lady. Wave it. And so that some of the thousand say wave it, standing all over the building. Wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it. Ten thousand, twelve thousand, hundred thousand, fifteen thousand, ten cent. It don't matter a dime, a quarter, wave it. Stand up and wave it. Stand up and wave it. Wave it. Get it saturated. Wave it hard. You in an atmosphere like this, you better not just be standing there just looking like a pole. Stand and wave. Let the seed get saturated all in this atmosphere. Glory to God. And glory to God. What's going to happen next? Put them out later. Come on, they don't mess my seed up. Come on, man. I got too much on the altar. Stop playing. In Jesus' name. I love you and respect you. Glory to God. What's taking so long? I want to get my seed in the ground. Wave it, wave it, wave it. Glory to God. Wave it, 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 wave it. Danita, come on, sow my seed. The woman of God is in the glory. Lord, one God in the glory. Sow my seed. Because my baby ain't been released to go to rehab, yet she's still healing. And so I'm sowing supernaturally that she won't even have to go to rehab. She's going to come straight out the brace and start walking. You don't know when to shout. Wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it. When I count to three, I want you to call out your address. Because you got to tell the miracle where to go. For some of you in here, when you call out your address, it's just your current address because your address, your address is about to be forwarded anyway. So when I count to three, even you who are sewing at home, when I count to three, call out your address with so much power and authority in Jesus' name. One, two, three, call out your address. Call it! Call it! Tell it where to go, tell it where to go. Tell it where to go, tell it where to go. Wave it, 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 wave it. Some of y'all have never sold like this. You're going to sew and watch God move. When you stretch out and step out on faith, watch God move. When I count to three, call out the name of your bank. Tell the Holy Spirit where to drop the account, where to make the drop, where to make the drop. One, two, three, call out the name of your bank. Call it. Call it, 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 call it. It's crazy. 
crazy until it come to pass. It's crazy until it come to pass. It's crazy until it come to pass. Call it! Wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it. Well, why we have to do all this? Because it's faith, that's why. Y'all, I'm about to do a cartwheel. This next yes you're getting ready to give God, and this is the last time we're going to shout. This next yes you're getting ready to give God is going to save every lost person in your family. It's going to save every person that the devil got in a headlock right now. You're going to send your yes in the atmosphere, and your yes is going to arrest them in Jesus' name. One, two, three, shout it. Yes! My baby being saved. My children are saved. My sons are saved. My daughters are saved. My uncles are saved. Ain't nobody going to hell. Ain't nobody going to hell. Ain't nobody going to hell. Shout it. Yeah. 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 Wherever you are and you're sowing, you're sowing by cash or check, come and just touch the altar. Go back to your seat praising God like you know your miracle getting ready to happen. Come on. From everywhere. Just come. Just come. Hold on to the rails. Glory to God. To sow your seed and go back praising God like you know your miracle getting ready to drop off in your house before midnight. Come on. I need some crazy, ridiculous souls in here. Some crazy, ridiculous faith walkers. Crazy, ridiculous. Come on. Open up your mouth and give God a yeah. Open up your mouth and give him a yes. 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 Clap your hands and give him glory. Come on, clap it like you know something coming back. Clap it like you know it's coming back. Clap like you know it's coming back. Clap like you know it's coming back double. Clap like you know it's coming back double. Clap like you know it's coming back double. It's coming back double. It's coming back double. It's coming back double. I've been approved. I've been approved. I got the approval. I got the confirmation. I'm carrying the glory. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for breakthrough. Thank you for yokes being destroyed. Thank you for strength. Thank you for power. Thank you for power. Thank you for power. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Come on, clap your hands and give God glory. Clap your hands and give him glory. Clap your hands and give God glory. Clap your hands and give him glory. It's getting ready to happen. Declare over your life. It's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. I feel God. It's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. It's coming back sooner. It's coming back quicker. 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 Strengthen your body. Strengthen your body. Strengthen your body. A miracle in your body. The doctors will be amazed. The medicine too hard. Strength being renewed like that of an eagle. Say that weight upon the Lord. He shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. You're getting ready to 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 mount up. Shout yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Open up your mouth and shout yeah. 
shout it, yeah. Yeah. I know y'all ain't tired. Yeah. I know you ain't tired. I know you ain't tired. I can really preach for another hour. Yeah. Yeah. Open up your mouth and give God glory. It's coming back sooner. It's coming back double. It's coming back quicker. It's coming back with power. Eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, neither has it entered to the hearts of men what God has. Open up, baby. You better hit that again. Tell them to come hit it again. Do it, do it just like you just did it. Hit it again just like you just did it. Hit it again just like, hit it again just like you, girl, you just don't know what you just did. Every struggle, hit it again. Everything that tries to keep you down, hit it again. That's how you knocking the devil out. Hit it again. That's how you taking back your mind. Hit it again. That's how you getting back your joy. Hit it again. Your anointing go into another level. I call you warrior. I call you fighter. Every seed of rejection, every closed door, God said, watch, I use you. I'm taking you like a David. I'm calling you like a David. I'm using you like a David. You'll defeat giant. In the name of Jesus, shout like that's your sister. Shout like that's your daughter. Shout like you ain't jealous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, every business owner, open up your mouth and shout. God taking you to seven figures, eight figures, nine figures, 12 figures, 20 figures. In the name of Jesus, every preacher, every prophet, a greater anointing, a greater glory, greater fire, Greater strength in the name. You're going to live to see it happen. You're gonna live to see it happen. You're gonna live to see it happen. You're gonna live to see it happen. The operative word here is you're gonna live. To see, the Bible says in Psalms 91, at the end, only with my eyes will I behold and see the reward of the wicked. You're going to live to see it happen. This last year, we were battled with some things, battered and beaten constantly with a narrative of fear. Afraid to breathe, afraid to hug, afraid, just afraid, locked in our houses, afraid, even driving in the car with people that we know, afraid. God has not given you the spirit of fear but a power and love and a sound mind. So I believe what God was doing in this hour, and I'm going to close it out for you, but I believe what God was doing is showing us what we really believe. Because he who the Son is set free is free indeed. Galatians 6 and 1 says, Be not entangled again. Stand fast. In the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Fear is bondage. 
And so when things come that speak contrary to what the Word of God says, we have to know that greater is He, don't we say it all the time, greater is He that's in me than he that's in the world. Greater is He that's in me than he that is on the news reporting how many people have died. Greater is He that is in me than what CDC says. You shall live and not die. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, you shall never die. I know this is hard, right? I, I, I understand it's warring against some things. Tiffany asked me, do I have a word? And I was like, nah. But <laughs> when I came in and I was in worship, I saw lights flying all over the place. Igniting, reigniting fires. Well, the reality is, he's like Jeremiah said, he's like fire, shut up in our bones, right? Shut up in our bones. And there's this show I like to watch called Naked and Afraid. Judge me later. <laughs> well, one of the key things they have to do when they put them out there is start a fire because the fire is vital to them living. In Acts 2, the Bible says the Holy Ghost came in and laid on each one of them like cloven tongues of fire. And they all begin to prophesy. They all begin to speak in tongues, glossa, diverse languages. And then there's another scripture that says, stir up your gifts. How do we do that? Praying in the Holy Ghost. And so in this hour, it's vitally important. I saw the Lord... I saw some of you like embers, right? The fire sort of dwindled down, but the lights were coming to shake it and agitate it. That was something that was echoed all throughout today. Stir it up. Thank God for Tiffany doing this. But I also want you to recognize that the same power that's in Tiffany dwells in you. Christ dwells in you richly. So yes, you're going to live. Yes, your generations are going to live. Yes, your seed is going to live. Because we trust the word greater than we trust our circumstances. We trust the word of God. Listen, listen, I love a good shout, but it ain't got nothing to do with you shouting. The reality is when Jesus died and he said it was finished, it was just that. And the Bible says you're seated with him in heavenly places in Christ. The only people that sit are people in authority. So you have authority in heaven. You have authority to call those things that are not to be as though they were. So then the power for life and death is in our tongue. So I want you all to say, I'm going to live to see it happen. You're going to live beyond taking it, wearing a mask, beyond vaccination, you're inoculated with the life of Jesus flowing from your very veins. You are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But the life I now live, I live by through the faith of the Son of God. How do you live? By the faith, through the faith of the Son of God. That's how you live. That's how you live. That's how you live. And so, when you're faced with things, we're going to do like Paul and Silas did. They sang praises and they worshiped. And if y'all would just. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, you are all together wonderful to me. Come on, here.
lift it up. Only you. Hey, come on. You're all. Yeah. All together wonderful. Here I am to worship. Here I am to. Come on. Every burden, every care, cast it at his feet. Because he loves you. He loves you and he cares. He cares about you so much. Yeah. To me and Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the word that was sown today. We thank you, Lord, that you get the glory. Only 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 you get the glory. And we thank you that the word was sown on good ground and that it will bring forth fruit and that that fruit will remain. Hallelujah. And as we travel the highways and byways and get on our planes and travel by bus, however we got here, Father, we thank you for Psalms 91 protection. No evil shall befall us. No plague shall come nigh our dwelling. A thousand will fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but it shall not come nigh me because you've given your angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways lest we dash our foot against a stone. Only with our eyes will we behold and see the reward of the wicked because the Lord is with us and you'll never leave us and you'll never forsake us. You're always with us. Christ in me the hope of glory. And we thank you. Go in peace. In Jesus' name. Love on somebody. Amen. Just in case you're wondering, the service is over. Go in peace.